Welcome to our worship from St Catholic's Ministry area on this third Sunday after Trinity. I'm sure that many of you will have realised that today is also Father's Day in the secular calendar. No doubt there'll be an array of cards on the mantelpiece with some combination of comments about dad jokes, beer, golf or football, or maybe even some about the troublesome children. And the easing of restrictions will mean that this year quite a lot of us will be sharing family time today. So thank you for making this time to be with us. However, we do recognise that not everybody wishes to celebrate their family relationships. And today, as ever, we are mindful of these people. Some will have experienced absent fathers, abusive fathers, fathers who have not shown the compassion and care we would hope for and others will be grieving the death of a father today, maybe for the first time. Whatever our situation, it is right and good that we should make time to be with God, our Heavenly Father, today. And as Christians, Jesus encourages us to pray to God, his Father, as our Father. And that brings comfort to many Christians. So let's pray to him now. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we have set aside this time to be with you. Father, we thank you for your loving care throughout this past week. And we thank you for Jesus who died to pay the price for our sins. We thank you that you are with us now by your Holy Spirit. And we pray that we will be able to focus on you and listen to what it is you are saying to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love the Psalms of David. I love the honesty with which he speaks to God and the confidence he has in his relationship with his Lord. He has a lot to teach us about the discipline of remembering to praise God. Take, for example, these words from Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. These words remind us that however we are feeling as we come to worship, God is everything to us and he deserves our praise. So let's praise the Lord together.
be still now as we listen to these words, the next part of Psalm 103, reminding us of how David experienced God's compassion in the face of his sin. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass, they flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. So with these lovely words in mind, let's turn to God and hold silence before him as we ask God for his forgiveness. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save, save us, us and help, help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save, save us, us and help, help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, Forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world around us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we are ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. And so confident in his forgiveness for us, may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image. To the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we continue to the end of Psalm 103 with praise in our hearts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his words. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O my soul. And with the whole host, we continue as we listen or join in with the words of Father, we love you. We're going to turn now to our Bible readings and Pauline and John in Bremar are going to do the readings this morning and then Rana 
who is the father of three, will lead our reflections this morning. A reading from the first book of Samuel. As soon as David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul, with David still holding the Philistine's head. Whose son are you, young man? Saul asked him. David said, I am the son of your servant Jesse of Bethlehem. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow and his belt. Whatever mission Saul sent him on, David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. This pleased all the troops and Saul's officers as well. A reading from the Gospel of St. Mark. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And a great storm of wind arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care if we perish? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? And they were filled with awe and said to one another, Who then is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father's Day sermons and services sometimes can be challenging. It can be very challenging for some people because of the negative experiences of fatherhood. However, Father's Day allow us to reflect on how much fathers truly matter and how much they contribute to teaching kids about great virtues that the world needs to become a better place. The Bible not only talks about biological fathers, but also highlights the role of spiritual fathers, like Paul was to Timothy. It also mentions the foster or adoptive fathers. I would like to start this morning with a question that Saul asked David in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 58, we read this question, whose son are you young man? Why did Saul ask this question from the man to whom he hired to play how? David as the one who killed Goliath problem here is in 1st Samuel chapter 16 Saul hired David to play the harp for him and yet in chapter 17 after David killed Goliath the giant Saul did not seem to recognize who this young man was there are two possibilities here first it would not be unusual that a busy preoccupied king who had a lot of state business going on around, had not taken enough notice of his humble hired positions. So as to recognize him as the same person who killed Goliath was quite difficult. However, once David performed this notable feat of killing the giant, the king would not help but take note of him and asked him who he was. On the other hand, it is possible that Saul knew who David was, but after David had performed this feat, 
this great act which need huge admiration was only inquiring who David's father was. This fits exact nature of Saul's question, which was not what your name is, whose son are you young man? If he had not recognized David, he should have asked, what is your name? Saul was known for placing the people, brave men in his bodyguard. Saul may have wondered if David had any more brave brothers, or he may have simply wished for the complete identification of this brave young man so that he could adequately reward his extraordinary accomplishment. When people ask how you got to be who you are, they may ask about your parents. They may ask about your parents for clues because they may know better than we are where we are. You want to make sure that they have the right story of your success. Bible tells us stories of different models of fatherhood. Some fathers who are not physically present with children, they are not with them at the various important milestones in their lives. But they may be supporting them financially living overseas or busy in their work. Some fathers are too much caring and pretty much act like a nurse or a bodyguard. They are always around their children and sometimes children feel that we don't need them around us. There are many dissatisfied fathers who grumble and complain about something all the time. We all are imperfect and imperfection is not always bad because it reminds us the need of the perfect one who should be our model. Life is not predictable. There are ups and downs along the way. Having someone around you who has faced similar challenges in life gives us a kind of security and confidence. If you know your father or someone who loves you the most has already faced these unpredicted challenges and realities of life, you would like to trust them and may feel safe in having them around. Why we feel safe in hospitals? Not only because of the machines and equipments, they matter, but more than that, our people, doctors and nurses, are excellent and just staff. What? Because we have confidence in them. So they know how to deal with the situation in which we are. Jesus' disciples had massive confidence in him. When they were in the boat and the storm came, they were crossed with Jesus because they felt to be untrained and he is sleeping. They could not expect this sort of thing from him. We are trying, we are drowning and you are sleeping. They are identifying his carelessness. Children often go through similar experiences when they feel their fathers are not we with them when they need and they are not giving proper attention to them and care. Trust in a relationship is immensely important. When challenges come, we should be cautious not to safeguard only from the threats and to protect ourselves, but also we need to protect our relationships being getting damaged by the threats. Jesus his disciples lost the trust but were too much focusing on the storm and they were not focusing on Jesus. Yes, challenges are real but together we shall be able to calm these storms. You may have noticed Jesus rebuked the wind first and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then he said to his disciples, why are you afraid? Why you are so worried? Do you still have no faith? For Jesus, it was important to help his disciples in difficult situation, but it was more important for him to intact and kept. 
that relationship safe from the storm. Our relationships are more important than our situations. But the challenging situations sometimes become a little test for a child-father relationship. You would expect your dad to be with you when you need. If you don't find him with you, that relationship may have no meaning or much less meaning. The job of an earthly father is to model the love and ways of our Heavenly Father. Many of us want to trust God. When times are good, it can feel easier. But when times feel difficult, it is even more important to trust God. God's unchanging character can give us a firm foundation when things feel unsteady and uncertain. Trusting in our relationship with God as the Father is not about ignoring your feeling or reality. It is not pretending that everything is okay when it isn't. Trusting God is living a life of belief in and obedience to God even when it's too complicated and difficult to understand. Trusting in our relationship with God is more than a feeling. It is a choice to have faith in what we say is even when your feelings or circumstances would have you believe something different. Your feeling and your circumstances matter and are very much worth paying attention to. God cares about them both. But those things alone are not reliable enough to base your life on. They can change at any moment, even in an instant. God, on the other hand, does not change. He is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow, and therefore is worthy of your trust. All human beings are God's children. As He created us all in His image, we read it in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. But Christians are children of God, in an other sense, because we call him Abba Father and have chosen to become part of his family through accepting the salvation he has offered us in Jesus Christ. The picture of God as our Father gives us some hints for what human fathers should be like. Think of a man or men who have played the role of father in your life. Think about what you have learned from your father. Consider the good qualities you admire about him. What does it show about God's attitude to his children? There are some people who have never known their biological father or who have had a negative experience of a father. Sometimes this can make it difficult to relate to the idea of God as a father. If you are in such a situation, think of other men, stepfathers, older brothers, friends of a family, grandfathers, youth leaders and church ministers who have been a constant, supportive and positive influence in your life. I was reading Reverend Joe Capoleo who raises a few questions which may help you or through you someone who is in need. What are the qualities of fatherhood evident in God? How can we model those to the children we care for? Is it necessary to be a biological father to take on a role of a father? Are there any children or young people in our community? who lack fathers? How can we help them? What is the role of a father in training a child? What responsibility does a father have to a child? Do these include spiritual responsibility? When you read Genesis chapter 18 verse 19 and Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 6 to 7, we read about these responsibilities which we have to pay towards our children. 
Colossians chapter 3 verse 21 says, Fathers, do not embitter or provoke your children or they become discouraged. What do you think it means by this? How a father creates the atmosphere in which a child will flourish into maturity. I would like to finish with the story of a man who in his 80s was reflecting on his life. This may be the experience of many of us because we all go through these phases and stages in our life. The story goes like this. Before I went to school, I used to believe my father knows everything. When I was in the primary school, I discovered my dad doesn't know everything. And then I became a teenager. Then actually it revealed on me. My father doesn't know anything. When I became a father, I realized my dad is pretty clever. He knows most things. Now I am a granddad. My dad is gone, but I want to tell you that, that you may not know everything, but one thing you knew very well is me. There are many reasons why fathers are important. The significance and impact of a father can make in child's life are substantial. There may be reasons that they are not able to be good fathers. So this Father's Day, don't forget to tell him how much you love him and to thank him for always being there. Thank you, Rana, for that challenge to us today. Now let's affirm our faith in God, the Holy Trinity. I believe and trust in God the Father, who created all that is. I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to go into a time of prayer now and let's start with the prayer for today, the third Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue in an attitude of prayer as Father Patrick leads our intercessions. Jesus tells us in the Gospel, God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son to save us, to bring us salvation, to give us a share in your own divine life. Today we celebrate Father's Day. We thank you for the gift of life, of human life. We thank you for the families and we ask you to bless all families and all parents and especially the fathers today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we praise you. We worship you. Father, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts will never rest until they rest in thee. 
Help us to be always aware of your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, may your kingdom come. May your son's message of love and mercy, the good news, be preached and listened to around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Help us to be faithful servants who are always obedient to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, give us today our daily bread. Provide your children with the nourishment they need, not just for their bodily needs, but for their spiritual needs also. We pray here for the poor, the hungry, for the victims of war and violence, We pray for those who hunger for justice and peace. Grant that they may find true joy and peace in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as the leaders of the world's nation meet together this week, give them the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. Instead of confrontation, may they be guided to seek reconciliation and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we commend to your love and mercy those in our community and parishes who are sick, housebound, those in hospital and nursing homes. We remember also those in prison. And we pray especially for the members of this parish and the neighbouring parishes, for Brian Jones, Jean Langford, Esme Nee, John Bedford, Adrian Ingham, Betty Tro. Heavenly Father, give them consolation in their sufferings and health in mind and body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we commend to your love and mercy those members of our community and our parishes who have gone to their rest. We mention especially today Vira Lewis and Nora Rowlands who have died recently, also Jean Jones, Margaret Hodge and Warren Richards. Father, welcome them and all our departed loved ones into your kingdom. May the light of your love shine on them forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers which we offer in the name of Jesus, your divine Son. Amen. Let's draw our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. As we draw towards the end of our service today, I'd like to thank on your behalf our friends in Bremaur, Pauline and John, and Patrick too, and also Tirana for all their contributions. Wherever you are today and whoever you are with, we pray that your day will be blessed and that God will keep you safe and well. Our next ministry area service will be next Thursday, the 24th of June at 12 noon, where the Reverend Jeremy Bevan will be leading our Zoom service. Check your emails for the code on the morning. 
There is no online service next Sunday, the 28th of June, but please check the Ministry Area website for services in your churches. Now our final song for today reminds us of God's love for us. He loved us so much that he gave Jesus to die for us. How deep the Father's love for us. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing was. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mother chose Sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders, a shame. Till it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished May God the Father, whose power at work within us can do infinitely more than all we can ask or conceive, may he strengthen us on our pilgrimage of faith. May God the Son, who has lifted up from the earth, that he might draw all people to him, reconcile us to one another and to God. May God the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, draw us together in the love and peace and praise of God. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. 
Amen.